All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about the top five USA knife brands, at least that I have currently and that I would recommend or feel comfortable recommending. And it's definitely contentious because over the last year, I have definitely collected a lot of especially USA knife brands for survival knives and have been very unenthusiastic and unimpressed with either price point, materials, customer service, or a myriad of different things. So for me, there's definitely been a lot of disqualified um, US brands and that doesn't necessarily mean that they make or you know have bad products It just means that I'm not interested in really like recommending them out to the world things like survive knives like the, the actual knife if you receive a survive I think they're like a really great, um, you know, kind of uh, poignant um, brand for this but you know they do make a quality product like if you receive a survive knife you'll have a hard time finding any fault with the actual knife but the brand really has very poor customer service hard to reach and fails to even deliver their product so i think like that's um kind of they're not all u.s brands are like that or not all the brands i dislike are like that but you know, it tends to be that way. So anyways, without any further ado, let's actually talk about some brands that are pretty darn good stand-up brands that I would heavily recommend. These are USA knife makers that I think are totally worth checking out. Now, before we get to the top five, I do wanna do one runner-up, and that is um, the conglomerate of, of Bussy Knives. Now, this one in particular is their SYKCO or Scrapyard Knife Company, but Bussy has a, a bunch of different brands to them. They have Bussy Custom, they have Bussy like Combat Knives, they have Scrapyard, they have um, Swamp Rat. And so they have like multiple different kind of sub brands, but the same overarching company makes all of them. So, you know, they're all making the steel and pretty much every steel that they have is in-house. Now they have recently started using some MagnaCut, so that's not really in-house, but this one in particular is like made out of SR101, and of course they're known for Infi steel, and so they have a number of proprietary blends in-house. So this, this company is pretty cool, and I feel like Bussy is typically overlooked because Bussy is just seen for their like Team Gemini and some of their, you know, more popular, but of course more exclusive and more expensive knives. Things like the Team Gemini tend to go for 600 plus dollars. And so while it's not necessarily the most attainable, um, things like this Scrapyard Knife Co. Um, WS1021 or their WS1020 series of knives are very affordable. They actually are, are anywhere from, depending on like which blade shape you get, anywhere from like 120 to 150 bucks. Now, the one thing I kind of dislike about them is that, you know, the knife, like when you go on their um, page, and this is primarily their page um, aftermarket sellers on the secondary usually have sheaths but if you do go to them specifically you buy just the knife so whatever price you see so let's say you see a hundred twenty dollar knife right you can factor in another 20 bucks for a sheath so I'm not the hugest fan of their model their business model um, some people may like it if you are a sheath maker yourself or if you have like a guy that makes kydex for you that's really good um, and you're not going to use a you know out-of-box sheath anyways then it's just fine but yeah so the knife itself whatever price you see is just the knife and then you have to add whatever accessories else you want added so that's why they are a runner-up I feel it's a little bit frustrating when you you know see a really good deal for a knife and you're like oh but then I have to add another 20 bucks for this and then another 10 bucks for this and then you know prices add up and then before you know it, you're paying $200 for a $130 knife so that can be a little bit frustrating but aside from that the quality really is there. Something like this WS1021 is pretty cool. You do have a, they're like one of the only, like at least from what I can see, companies in the biz that are doing things like a triple Cerakote finish. Like you guys can see here, this is a triple layer Cerakote finish to this knife. So not only does it look really cool, but it's something that like, once again, you don't really see out there. So it's very special, very unique. And their knives are pretty solid. And a lot of their blade steels like SR 101 here are essentially proprietary blends of more typical steels like 52100. So SR 101 is a proprietary blend of um, 52100 ball bearing steel. So not bad, but not the best either. 
All right, next one up for me is going to be rat knives. Now this is gonna be number five or fifth place. And this is the rat seven. I have a few rat knives. I've had a bunch throughout the years, um, but the rat seven is cool. Um, the rat five is awesome. Oh, they just make a lot of great knives. Now, the cool thing about Ontario Knife Company as a whole is that um, these guys recently went out of business and were acquired by um, Essie. So it is going to be cool to see what happens to these guys. Hopefully everything goes well and they're able to revive this line because I feel like the rat lineup is one of the cooler kind of survival knife lineups out there because they are reasonably affordable and you are still getting a you know just essentially an unrefined great product so essentially something like this rat 7 is very similar to the se6 but at half the cost and once again you're paying for it you get a pretty minimal sheath that's not really that great like it retains the knife well that's about it and then you know you're getting um, my card handles which are great but you know they're unfinished they're untreated they're you know just just basic they're not really contoured that well but the thing is that's nice is if you're reasonably in uh you know if you're reasonably handy you can you know round these handles off more make it you know more personalized or you can go the route and buy aftermarket handles aftermarket sheaths and you know make a knife that really fits your needs so i think this is a very cool um, brand and knife product as a whole but ontario knife company i am excited to see where they go once again they are kind of out of business right now you can still find like like any you know mass manufacturer they didn't make a lot of knives before just shutting their doors so you can still find different rat knives out there um, on the secondary and on the primary but they are not currently being made hopefully um, SC revives them and gives them a you know breath of fresh air all right, next one up is going to be Tops. Now, Tops is very interesting because they do tend to have a bit of a rotating cycle of knives in their lineup. Sometimes you can find their older knives. Um, they do have staples like the Tops Fieldcraft and the Bracamo that they make, you know, pretty religiously. But they do just make a whole bunch of awesome knives. They make things like the Toma Field Knife. Um, they make things like the Tops Tom Brown Tracker and other really cool designs that you know maybe you're a little bit more niche or specialized to a specific style of survival but this company is really hard to go wrong with because they just offer so many different variants and flavors of knives for wilderness use and applications so it's really hard to go wrong with tops and because they basically stay to the kiss principle they use differentially heat treated 1095 like are you getting amazing superb performance probably not but you're getting a really reliable product that is going to be very durable so it's a trade-off that you're not going to get super high performance but you are getting a really reliable product all right now we're getting into some of the brands that really excite me and at least in my opinion um they do really excite me and they are very awesome first one up is bark river knives now bark river is one of those contentious companies of people either love them or hate them but i I love Bark River because as I've mentioned in previous videos, Bark River is very similar to Tops in the fact that there's just a million different flavors of Bark Rivers out there. So there's a very high chance that you can find the blade steel, the handle type, the you know design overall that will fit your needs. So like if I was only allowed to have one brand or like buy from one brand for the rest of my you know knife life, I would probably be Bark River knives because when it comes to like bushcrafting and survival blades, these guys just make so many different designs once again they also make their version of the tops tom brown or not tops but <laughs> the tom brown tracker they make their own versions of different um you know different kind of like larger uh heavy duty survival knives and choppers machetes uh they do everything under the sun so these guys are very cool um and I, I do really enjoy them. Now, another thing I get a lot of comments when I typically do videos like, what do you like dislike the most about Bark River knives? A lot of people dislike the polished handles. And unfortunately, I don't have any other Barkies out on the table right now, but I brought this one out specifically because I wanted to show that depending on you know factory options if you do order from factory you can get their handles non-polished this is a factory um, unpolished handle here and 
I really do like it. It's probably one of my favorite handles of all the bar keys I own because it does have that like actual raw micarta handle finish to it. So it's very grippy. Like I said, a lot of people complain about how these knives look more for show than they actually do you know, use. But this is a very good example of a Bark River that, like I said, doesn't have a polished handle. It is left, um, you know, rough so that you can get good micarta, that good grip on micarta. And uh, yeah, there's really, this is a very usable knife. Like this is, this is a nice looking knife, but it's definitely not for, you know, show. And granted, I will say on the flip side, things like my Strike Force 2, definitely with the mosaic pins and the beautiful wood handles, like the burl handles um, and things like that, they do look more showy. But the cool thing about Bark River is that whether the knife looks like a show piece or not, it is absolutely built to do a lot of work. So yeah, they are, they are workhorses regardless to what they may look like. All right. Next one up is going to be Architect Knives. Now these guys are newer and I kind of debated putting them on the list just because Architect is an interesting knife company. They are a company themselves, but they use a lot of other companies to build their knives. So like in particular, this blade stock here came from Tops. Now they've since switched 3V sourcing over to White River, but they do use knife companies like Tops, like White River, to make their blades. They make their handles, I believe, in-house um, and stuff. So they do make some of it in-house. They do source some of it out. So that's kind of why I was like, do I include these guys on the list? But I thought I would include them on the list because like I said, they do make portions of this knife. And realistically, this is still their company. You cannot like Tops or White River might make this blade, but you can't order this blade from those companies. This is an architect only thing. So I thought I would include them because I, I really do like talking about them because like I said in previous videos, Survive knives are awesome and these are probably the closest thing you can get to a Survive knife if you like, you know, what Survive offers in their field blades. This is probably the closest thing that you can get, especially now that um, Survive is stepping away from the GSO lineup and only focusing on the EDC lineup that they make, and so their larger blades are going away. These are like the closest thing you can get to the f their field knives, and they're really high quality, and Architect will ship these guys out super fast. Like I've dealt with Architect, you know, through ordering this knife because you basically build it yourself. They, you know, send you the components and you, you just assemble it. So uh, it's, it's a little bit of a DIY thing, but it's honestly totally reasonable. It is not hard at all. And they are super responsive um, to customer service. And I placed my order with them and I literally got the knife within a week of placing the order. So for me, I think that's a pretty, pretty big win. And not just the fact that it's, you know, a great knife and the customer service is good, but, you know, it's a comfortable knife, it's ergonomic, it works well. Um, like I said, I have no problems with this blade at all. So anyways, guys, that is the Architect. Now let's talk about the last one, the one that probably no one will like, and that is Chris Reeve knives. Now Chris Reeve knives, they don't make a ton of outdoor knives, but I really do think that the Pacific and the Green Bray is pretty good, but the different like smaller kind of like backpacker, and they go through different smaller fixed blade models throughout the years, like they no longer make the backpacker, but um, they do try to keep smaller fixed blades in their lineup. Of course, like I said, the Pacific the seven inch version without the serrations is my preference. And these guys perform really well. And a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, that's a hollow ground and it is a hollow ground knife, um, but it works just fine. I think honestly, the performance of this guy is pretty darn good. It's a Bill Harsey design, so it's a very nice design and they're not cheap at all. But um, if you have the money to go for one, I really do think they are worth it, especially if you are able or are confident to do a little bit of aftermarket um, modification to the knife, you can really make these things quite, quite good survival knives. So I have to give Chris Reeve a prop or a large props for that because they do make some really solid field blades. Like I said, they primarily specialize and most people know them for their things like the Sabenza, the Incosi, the um, um, Amazon, and I do own those knives as well, but they do make some really solid fixed blades too. So those are my top five brands, plus a runner up to kind of go over, I think really solid USA brands that are killing it when it comes to 
uh, field knives, outdoor knives, and knives that I do honestly use out in the wilderness. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.